before I got on Periscope, I tweeted a challenge, and it goes like this. I challenge people on Twitter to provide to me in the comments the best link to an argument in favor of climate change alarm. In other words, I wanted to see a link to the one best argument that makes the case most convincingly the CO2 that uh, uh, humans are creating is warming the planet at an alarming and dangerous rate. You might be wondering, why am I asking for this link? Because I'm going to do what I think no one has ever done before. Or at least I've never seen it, and I've been looking. Um, I have in my possession the most persuasive uh, climate skepticism link I've ever seen. And I'll present it to you when I get the, the other side first. But I want the best argument in favor of climate change. And when I have it, I'm going to tweet it in the same tweet with the best argument that says it's bogus. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen the two best arguments in the same place? No, you haven't. <laughs> You've never seen it. Now, I keep arguing that why can't we see the, the two experts on the same stage? And it turns out that the reason seems to be that either nobody wants to host it or the, the pro-climate scientist people say, I don't want to be on the same stage because I would be legitimizing the other side. Um, and, and maybe, yeah, Tony Heller is exactly who I'm, who I'm going to tweet. I saw an extended presentation of his yesterday. And uh, let me tell you this. If you only see the climate scientist point of view, if that's all you see, it is really persuasive. It viewed, in, viewed by itself, it is completely persuasive. If you see Tony Heller's presentation of his, his claims of, of what is bogus in climate science, if you watch that, you will be completely persuaded that it's a hoax. <laughs> so those two, those two different sides are completely persuasive, viewed alone. So I'm gonna do what nobody apparently has ever done. I'm gonna put them in the same tweet and I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge the world to read both of them. I'm gonna say, spend 10 minutes looking at this side, the best argument, and then 10 minutes looking at the best argument on the other side. And I, I've done that, right? So I've, I have spent time looking at the pro and the con arguments, and I'm gonna tell you, the, the argument that climate change is is literally a hoax. Well, hoax is the wrong word. Literally a scam, let's say. In other words, that people are doing illegitimate things to get this result. The argument that that's true is really persuasive. <laughs> now, I want to be really careful because I'll be taken out of context here. When I say something is persuasive, that does not mean it's true. All right? There's a difference. Something can be really persuasive and just be complete BS. And I wouldn't know the difference. But here's the interesting part. If you put the two arguments side by side, my, um, my prediction is that anyone who reads the two arguments side by side will become a skeptic. And I don't think that I know anybody who believes in climate science, who has ever looked at the good argument by a skeptic. Because there, there are lots of different skeptics, right? So some of the skeptics say, oh, it's all um, solar activity. They are not credible. So if you compare these solar activity people to the regular climate scientists, the climate scientists win. <clears throat> Again, I'm not saying what's true. I'm only saying what's more persuasive. So the people saying it's all solar activity are not persuasive. They could be right. I would have no way of knowing, but they're not persuasive. The, the people who say that <clears throat> CO2 is good in any amount and that it doesn't matter how much we have, 
it's a, it's a trace gas, etc. Well, not the trace gas people, but the people who say that any amount of it is going to be better, they're not really credible. Because it, it seems at some point there should be a problem. I don't know what that point is. It might be 100 times more than we're forecasting. But at some point, you're going to have too much, aren't you? Uh, until I hear that argument, the, the side that says more CO2 is just fine, it's not credible. It's like an incomplete argument. But uh, the, ar the argument that is most persuasive is showing historical records that the temperature that used to be reported by NASA used to be different than what they're reporting now. <laughs> and that case looks pretty solid. Now, what's interesting is that the case, the best skeptic, uh, and I think Tony Heller is the name of the gentleman, is an engineer by training. So the best skeptic is not a scientist, he's an engineer by training. Now, you might say to yourself, hey, that's no fair because an engineer is not a scientist. How can a scientist evaluate scientific claims? And the answer is, he's not. He's not, he's not evaluating any scientific claims. He's just looking at the information that the scientists themselves have presented. So he doesn't do anything except use the public information. And he shows you the public information and you look at it and you go, Okay, he didn't make up any of that. That is from the actual NASA records. It's from the news stories from NASA. It's from, you know, uh, sources that he shows you. He explains every source so you can check it yourself. It is really, really persuasive. Is it true? Don't know. That's why I like to put the two arguments together. So, uh, yeah, and I'm hoping both of them will be video links because I just to make it equal, because one of them is a video link. So I'd like both of them to be video links because there might be a difference between video persuasion and text persuasion.